First thing I'd like to talk about though is nothing to do with respiration as much as resonance of our voice and that would be these structures here. These are referred to as sinuses. This is the frontal sinus and the frontal bone, the sphenoidal sinus and the sphenoid bone right below the cella turcica and then this is the ethmoid sinus. Now ethmoid sinuses are actually just a kind of a bubbly uh, structures which we sometimes refer to as the ethmoid air cells. So we don't have a sinus per se like this, but more of a kind of a, a, a series of small sinuses. Air is actually going to be traveling in through the nostril, which we'll call the external nares, and then into the vestibule where the nose hairs are. And then it's going to be filtered, humidified, and um, warmed in the nasal cavity itself. It does that because we have extra surface area in the nasal cavity created by the conchi. So there's the inferior nasal concha, which is a bone by itself, and then the, in, the middle and the in superior nasal conchi, as the middle and the superior nasal conchi, are part, of course, of the ethmoid bone. There's also channels between the conchi, so we have the inferior meatus, we have the middle meatus, and we have the superior meatus. In the back of the meati and the conchi is something called the coana or uh, internal nares. So that's this region right here. And then we have the entrance of the pharyngotympanic tube right there. This also contains a bit of lymphoid tissue called the tubal tonsil. Once we get back in this region, we are in what's called the nasal pharynx. We travel down and to the oral pharynx, and then behind the larynx is the laryngopharynx. This tube ultimately gives rise to the esophagus. Now, right here, this is the soft palate, and this is the hard palate. The soft palate rises when we swallow, which allows us to essentially block the passage to the nasal cavity. So when we swallow food or, or drink, essentially the material travels down through the pharynxes into the esophagus as opposed to up into the nasal cavity, unless of course you're laughing. Um, this is the epiglottis here. The epiglottis, remember, will also fold over the top of the uh, entrance of the trachea, uh, which of course is the larynx which will prevent food or water from getting down into our air passages. A little sensory device called uvula is the little dangly thing behind your throat, in the back of your throat. Um, and of course this is a sensory system which lets us know when we're swallowing something. If we aggravate this too much, this creates a gag reflex. So instead of things going up, everything are going down, everything winds up going up. Again we see the true vocal cords here and the vestibular folds and once again the glottis. All right, let's review a few parts of the larynx. The larynx, of course, is your voice box. And we'll begin with something that's really not part of the larynx at all, but is the hyoid bone. Remember the hyoid bone is what the tongue attaches to. And then most of the larynx is made out of hyaline cartilage. The broadest piece of hyaline cartilage is this structure right here called the thyroid cartilage. We come down here, we see the cricothyroid ligament, and that, of course, separates the cricoid cartilage from the thyroid cartilage. That's just a connective piece of tissue here. The muscle that we see here is also referred to as the cricothyroid muscle. And this gland resting on the side is the thyroid gland. The tube that we have coming down here is the trachea, and these are annular ligaments that we find between rings of hyaline, sometimes referred to as hyaline rings, uh, on the trachea. Let's spin this around. We're going to take a look over here. You can see that these rings are not continuous. They actually um, essentially split right here in the back where the esophagus is. That gives the esophagus a little bit more room to bulge into the trachea when we swallow. 
And then if we work our way back up to the, thy uh, the uh, cricoid cartilage, which is here, you can see that this is a very large area in the back. The term cricoid means ring, and indeed this looks almost like a big class ring or something. Resting on top of the cricoid cartilages are the arytenoid cartilages, which the term arytenoid means spoon, although they, lo they look a little bit more like shoes to me. And then these little tiny corniculate cartilages here. So arytenoid and corniculate cartilages. Now everything I've talked about in terms of cartilage so far is made of highland cartilage, but this structure is the epiglottis. This is made of elastic cartilage. The epiglottis essentially flops down over the larynx when we swallow, and that prevents food from entering our windpipe, essentially our, our trachea. So this is epiglottis. Again, it is made of elastic cartilage. Let's take a look at this model. Now, some of the things we talked about already, there's the hyoid bone, there's the thyroid cartilage, there's the cricoid cartilage. This is the trachea itself. The trachea splits into the primary bronchi. The primary bronchi split into secondary bronchi. Secondary bronchi split into tertiary bronchi and tertiary bronchi split into the next level, I guess we could say quaternary, and on and on and on. There are 23 different divisions before we get to the actual alveoli of the lungs. We take a look at the interior of this model. So we have a sagittal cut in effect. We see a slit here which is referred to as the glottis. And this is where the air is actually traveling through. And then we have something up here called the vestibular folds. Vestibular folds are sort of a fail-safe if the um, epiglottis fails to have, to prevent food from entering the trachea or the larynx. Essentially, these folds will close to prevent that from happening. When that happens, if food gets trapped here, obviously we cough and we try to project the food out from uh, there. Below the glottis is this piece of connective tissue that vibrates with our voice. This is essentially the vocal cords. So these are the vocal cords here. And then of course the vestibular folds are sometimes referred to as false vocal cords. They however prevent us from essentially um, choking to death and the, the true vocal cords of course allow us to have a voice in effect.